Well, when I saw my name on the schedule after Brother Aaron and Brother Jeff, I thought there must be some type of terrible mistake. <laughs> so I'm going to do my best to follow these brethren up. It, 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 this has been an excellent session. Well, um, we've heard already this week from this text in the first chapter of Romans, uh, Brother Boyce uh, did a, a, an excellent job of preaching to us about the power of God that is found in this gospel. Uh, today I want to focus uh, more upon the fact that this gospel is the gospel of Christ. Now firstly, when we speak of this gospel, of this good news, we are in fact speaking of news. These are not things which were evident until they were revealed. Uh, unless they were declared, unless this news was made known, we would not have ever known this. This is not something that we could have figured out on our own. This is something that was articulated, that was revealed by God and by Christ. So firstly, the gospel is the gospel of Christ. It's, it's his gospel. There are specific and uh, several specific events that occurred that are important to the purpose of God uh, that the gospel communicates. And Jesus chose the witnesses. Jesus, uh, God ordained the measure and the times and the seasons. All the details of which uh, we are privy to were given unto us by revelation. This is not something that, uh, um, that men did of themselves. Whether by, whether by means of the apostles' eyewitness of the events which occurred or of the, the testimony of Brother Paul who confirmed that the gospel that was preached of him was not after man because he, wasn't, he didn't receive it from man, he was not taught it from man, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So I, I speak as a man when I say this, but there is no chance that uh, what we have in the gospel is like the, the um, result of Chinese telephone. You know, you all are, some of you when you're younger may have remembered this game where you whisper this into this person's ear and it gets passed on and on and on and on before it gets to the end. It's not the same message that was declared. There is no chance, brethren, that a vital detail has been left out that's pertinent to our salvation. This was, this was ordered, ordained, revealed by God. It is the gospel of Christ. Now, um, uh, the text that our brother Aaron just spoke to us, this is what we often think of when, when you think about the gospel. These, these high, uh, three high mountaintops, as it were. This is the, the, the um, summary of the gospel, that Jesus died, was buried, and, and rose again. Um, this is the foundation these are like the most important points, but this is not the totality of, of the message of the gospel. And what I want to speak of uh, today is that the, uh, the, the gospel of Christ is something that was, art, was uh, spoken of and articulated all throughout the scripture. Even from the beginning of time, uh, these, these things were, were, were beginning to be revealed. So the, uh, I want to do kind of a, a overhead view and an umbrella view of this. That uh, and instead of just touching on these three points, I want to touch on before the foundation of the world, Jesus' birth, his life among men, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. Now first, before the foundation of the world. Now the very word Christ uh, carries with it the idea, the idea of determinate counsel. Uh, it speaks of divine intention. It speaks of, of planning, of forethought. It speaks of purpose. The, the, the Christ is the one whom God appointed, the one whom, whom God anointed. Jesus, there was, there was thought that went into this. Jesus, um, in his intention, set himself apart for this. And the good news in all of this, however, is not only that to see the behind the scenes workings in this, the fact that it was purposed, but to see when it was purposed before the foundation of the world. So this, this, this purpose, this determination did not happen as a result of what happened to men in the fall. This is not something that is subject to circumstance. This is something that is timeless, that is from e eternity past. And this is something that um, was, was declared even as far back as the, in Genesis, in the third chapter of Genesis, the 15th verse, we see this, that, that, that this, this, this coming seed. And First Peter, he talks about the lamb that was slain since the foundation of the world. Um, 
and the second Timothy that, that he we see that he saved us by a holy calling and not according to our works but according to his own purpose his own grace that was um, given unto us in Christ Jesus before the world began all of the goodness in God of God and what he's purposed and what he's intended in salvation was not a response to the consideration of man's need after the fact but it was determined before man was is that, is that not good news? I mean, does that not bring you confidence and assurance to know that, that the, the determination of God is not, is not changed, it is not altered by, by, by anything? What, his, his counsel will stand and he will do all of his pleasure regardless of what happens. So firstly, the gospel is a message of God with us. A message of divine pro provision, not from afar or impersonally, uh, but intimately. Uh, Jesus was born. This is the gospel of Christ, the good news of one who was, cho who was chosen, one who appointed it and himself submitted to humility to a degree that we are unable to fathom as, as beings in the earth. Emmanuel, God with us, the God-man, God made like unto sinful flesh, the one who, who, was the wor who was the Word, who was with God and was God, the one who, who participated in the very creation of the world, a body was prepared him. He actually entered in the, into the world as one of his own creation in order to save them. Uh, throughout the ages, this this was this was alluded to. We see this in, in the in the prophets, in the, the seventh chapter of Isaiah. He he revo reveals that behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and we, that you shall call his name Emmanuel. Uh, the, and in Isaiah, the ninth chapter of Isaiah, this is another one that's that's um, we're very familiar is with. Is for unto us a child is born, a son is given. He it, it, before, even. And beforehand, this is being this is being prophesied of. Our our minds are being pointed in this direction. But there came a day when when the truth of this was evidently with power, glory, and joy declared to the sons of man. That that, that and I never really thought about it this way before. But the the thing what what the um the God the angels were really in in the day that Jesus was born the first to like explicitly declare the gospel you know it was it was declared in seed form the, the details were kind of murky but this is the first time where it's 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 very explicitly said and the angel said unto them fear not for behold i bring you good tidings of great joy good news which shall be to all people for unto you this day is born a savior it's no longer it's coming one of these days. This day is born a Savior in the city of David. So this is very specific. This is the gospel. And his, this shall be a sign unto you. You'll find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, good will towards men. Good news, brethren. God... That, this is, this is uh, part of the gospel of Christ, the birth of Christ, the incarnate word. This, this, this news was of, of such a magnitude that it, 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 it caused this outburst of, of praise and glory. Um, perhaps even uh, more uh, than us as mortal beings, the, the, the angels at this time, they understood the... the um, how great and glorious this connection was. They understood the, the profundity of what was happening here, this bridge between God and man in bodily form. Now we'll get more deep into this when we talk about the implications of the resurrection and, and the new birth, but the, the, the truth of it was here in, in seed form, that this, this message was de that was declared to them that evening about the, the, the birth of Jesus was an anticipation of what would be accomplished by the last Adam. So secondly, Christ's time on earth. Now this gospel is a message of a perfect man. The gospel of Christ is a message of a man who always did the things that please the Father. Now think about that. A man who always did the things that please the Father. Who is, who is tempted in all points like as we are, but without sin. 
In Jesus' earthly life and ministry, he demonstrated this, that the one who, who was provided for us was not only one who was perfectly qualified to act as our substitute and that he was perfect and divine, but that he was able to do so in spite of being in a body of flesh. He demonstrated this, living in the world and, and subjecting himself to every earthly disadvantage or spiritual temptation that could possibly come upon a man, and, and he overcame. His, his perfect life in the flesh legally qualified him to vicariously represent us as being both a man and yet innocent, but there was more than this even being accomplished in this. Uh, this, this is, you can see in this the wisdom of God on display in the way that he did this. The, the, the message of the gospel is a message of a suffering savior. It, it's a messing, message of a persecuted man of sorrows who was acquainted with grief, who endured, outlasted, and overcame the world. You see, this, the script, think about how, how profound this is. This is something that's always stuck out to me. It says that, that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. How, how profound a statement is that? How significant is that? that? That God, he was with God and was God, that, that, that he submitted himself to be obedient. This, this really uh, brings us to the heart of what I was able to see in, in uh, Jesus' life on the earth is that outside of the most obvious direct connection to his, the coming atonement, that he was, he was, you know, he was born to die. That was the, the, sole, you know, the core purpose of him coming in the earth. But um, it also provided something that, that had, had not previously been been there. It, 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 the need for understanding on the part of Godhead in order to successfully minister to man was required, that was required to accomplish the purpose that God intended. Um, the gospel of Christ is news of one who can effectively minister to our need, weakness, and frailty because he himself experienced it. This, this, this is a, a unique ability. This is something that uh, I mean, aren't you thankful, brethren, that an angel was not charged with this? That, that they can't be touched with the feeling of, of your infirmity. They, they could not be a merciful and a faithful high priest to you in things concerning God, but Jesus can because, because he was a man and he was tempted in all points like as we are but without sin. That is good news, brethren. That's gospel. And next, and this is you know probably one of the most preeminent things is the, is the death of Christ. The gospel is a message of sacrifice. The gospel of Christ is a message of a price that was paid, a message of redemption and reconciliation, of peace with God. The good news that we were, that, that God did what we were unable to do. What, what, what we could not do to the weakness of our flesh, God did. God's own right arm brought salvation. God provided for himself and Jesus Christ a lamb. Well, this is uh, perhaps the most weighty and um, preeminent consideration of Christ's work uh, without which nothing else could have been accomplished. We've, we've spoke a lot this week about how the, the gospel of Christ is central to the, re to the revelation of Scripture. And uh, I, you could say that the death of Christ is like central to the gospel. So this is, this is like the core of the core. This is uh, um, very important. Now, even in, even in uh, God's dealings with men in the past, you can see how the consideration of Jesus' death was, he, he's always dealt with man with this in mind. Even in times past, even since the beginning of the world, before, before Christ came into the world in the law, God dealt with man with, with this, these kind of like rose-colored glasses on, so to speak, that he did everything that he did when he dealt with men in prospect of the coming Savior. Uh, the, the, the sacrifices that were under the law, um, you know, we understand now that they did not actually succeed in taking their sins away. But at that point in time, this was like a, a, a for God as much as it was for us, a, a reminder to him of, the, of what was coming. He, he was able to be long-suffering and patient because he knew that this, this was coming. Now, I, I just want to pause for a moment and consider the way that the prophet Isaiah expressed this. This is a text that's always been really powerful. It's always had a really powerful effect on me. It says, yet it, it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He, he hath put him to grief. 
Then thou shalt, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Now I can assure you, brethren, that for God to bruise his only begotten son was not an easy thing to do. This was not something that in and of itself God, God derived pleasure from. But this is what was required for you to be able to be accepted. Amen. It's, it's not just that he submitted his body to pain and to suffering and to death. That's, hard, that's a, a hard enough thought in and of itself. But he poured out his soul an offering for sin. He gave, he gave himself it says in another place, who through the eternal spirit offered himself to God. Jesus has everything of himself invested in this work. Amen. Later in the chapter, Isaiah put it this way, that he poured out his soul unto yeah. death. Paul wrote to the Galatians, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. In 2 Corinthians, he taught that he who knew no sin was made to be sin for us. So it, if, if, if Jesus poured himself out for us, if Jesus laid down his life, if Jesus gave himself to God on our behalf, then how can we possibly do any less than that? And not only that he did this for his love for God and for his desire to do the will of God and fulfill his purpose, but he did this for us, brethren. That... that we see love in that. That is the expression of love. Jesus is our Passover. He is the propitiation for our sins. He is our peace. That is good news, brethren. That's gospel. That brings me to the, the, to the next stage of this gospel in consideration of this message that, that uh, he is our life, the resurrection of Christ. Now, the gospel is also a message of renewal. It, it's a message of, of resurrection, of life eternal. It's a message of a new heart and a new mind, of power and effectiveness. And it is so because it's the gospel of Christ. The good news is not so much that as a result of what Christ has done, God is able and willing to give you life. That's, that's true, but it's to, more precisely and more um, specifically, what Jesus accomplished in dying for your sins made it possible for God to justly and righteously make you alive by joining you to Christ. So Christ himself is the life that we have been granted. That's, this is the gospel of Christ, that he is our life. Jesus spoke of this himself. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Not, by, not just by what I've done, by me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. And whosoever believes in me, uh, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me will never die. Amen. Why? Because, because they're in him. Because he is our life. He's the provision of life. Amen. Our resurrection is experienced as a result of participating in his resurrection. It, it, it is being raised with him. In his death, he removed the barrier preventing man from coming to God and being raised again. He made a way for, for them to be joined to him through, through him, through his actual person. The gospel is a message of Christ in you. The, the, the good news that as Christians, our lives are actually hid with Christ in God. That the very same resurrection life that Christ overcame the grave according to is working in us as we overcome these bodies of this death. As Jesus overcame the world, this same resurrection life in us is causing us to be able to overcome the world. This, this, this lively fellowship with God is, is, a, is a present experience for the believer. This is not just something that we are looking forward to in, 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 you know, in the ages to come. The, 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 the very moment that you are raised from those baptism waters, you have eternal life. Amen. Now, when Jesus rose from the grave and he, and he was resurrected, um, he did not remain in the earth. We know this. This is testified of in the scripture that there came a, a, a point in time when he ascended. He went back uh, into the heavenlies. So the, the gospel of Christ is a message of confidence. It's a message of God being for us. It's a message of access to divine representation. Jesus is presently our advocate with the Father. That, that's, 
that's the gospel that he's he's inter presently interceding on our behalf he is presently building his church there is a man sitting at the right hand of god above all principalities and powers and names that any name that can be named now as a man that is good news to you so the, the, you know, what can we say to these things, brethren? Well, let us therefore come boldly uh, uh, to, 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 um, to obtain grace and mercy at, at the time of need because we are actually able to come boldly to the throne of grace. Amen. Now, the, the, the same Savior who intimately knows your need that we spoke of earlier, who's, who's able to be touched with the feeling of your infirmities, who knows what it's like to be weak, to be, to be hungry, to be frail. That same Jesus uh, has, has the power to distribute grace to you uh, without any reservation. The same person who knows what you need has the power to give it to you. So I say to this, brethren, if God be for us, who can successfully be against us? And brethren, just as, as, as when Christ was raised from the dead, he didn't remain in the earth. He, he, he was received back unto the Father. Those who are in him, in their measure, have, have also left this world, at, you know, so to speak. That we've actually been provided a place outside of this world to which we can resort. And this isn't merely a, a change in geography. It's, it's a translation. It's a, it's, it's a conversion, a granting of, of divine resource and power. Now, lastly, uh, the gospel of Christ is the gospel of, the, of his second coming and of the ages to come. Christ, this is the gospel, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So have you been raised to walk according to the resurrection of Christ? Are, are you dead? Is your life hid in him? Are you walking in the spirit and living in the heavenly places into which you've been set in Christ Jesus? Then this is good news for you, brethren, that there's, there is coming a day when he's going to return in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them who know not God and obey not the gospel. If you've obeyed the gospel, that's good news to you, isn't it? To destroy the wicked with the brightness of his coming. If you're not the wicked, that's good news to you, isn't it? So, beloved, now we're the sons of God, but it, and it doesn't yet appear what we shall be, but we, we do know this. Our life is hid in Christ with God. He is our life, so that when, when, he, when he appears, we'll be like him, brethren, because we, we, can, we shall see him as he is. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, we also will appear with him in glory. So, uh, in closing you this, brethren, in summary, if I had to try and fit the gospel of Christ in, into to one paragraph, uh, it, it, to the limits of my understanding, it would sound something like this. According to God's determinate counsel and foreknowledge, a Savior was provided for you who paid the price that you couldn't pay, defeated the foe that you were enslaved by. Through death, he destroyed the one who held you in bondage, and now, having overcome death, lives forevermore. A provision has been made for all those who believe to be buried into this death, to be raised to walk in the newness of this life. And not only so, but the Savior who is seated at the right hand of God over all principalities and powers is able to be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. The same Savior has promised that he's going to come again to receive you unto himself so that he might show you throughout the ages to come, uh, world without end, the riches and, of, of his grace and mercy. Amen. That's good news, brethren.